Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Once each year on the African plains, herds of grazing animals make a great migration. Most numerous are the large wildebeest, also known as the new. Traveling with them is the topi, another large antelope, which is a species of hartebeest. Among the smaller of the moving animals is the Thompson's gazelle, a more delicate antelope. Included as well is the familiar zebra, which moves in close-knit herds. All these are non-predatory animals which migrate in order to find sufficient grasses for survival. Their annual movement, however, takes them into the territory of certain predators. Always waiting is the cheetah, fastest animal on four legs, and the spotted hyena, which is a formidable hunter. One of the most fearsome predators is the wild dog, which roams the plains in packs. Another is the lion, undisputed king of its realm. Our story today deals with the delicate balance of nature among these animals. The migration begins here in the southern portion of Africa's Serengeti Plains in Tanzania, moving in a northwestern curve to the great plain called the Mara, which stretches into western Kenya to here in the Maasai Mara Game Preserve, then back in a southwestern loop to the Serengeti. When the migrating animals, weary from their long track, reach the Mara, the scene is set for the elimination of those that have weakened. According to nature's law, only the fittest will be able to escape the predators of the Mara. After a journey of about 200 miles from the Serengeti, the wildebeest move more slowly than they did when their migration began. They pause more frequently to feed, but only briefly, for the rigorous trek is not yet over. Hardship and dangers still lie ahead, and some, weakened by their long walk beneath the blazing African sun, are more susceptible to these problems. One major obstacle still lies ahead of them, the deep and treacherous Mara River. Driven by a migratory urge they must follow, they move warily to the shore. Some stop to drink but most of them enter the water without pause, heading for the more verdant grasslands on the other side. The river has a powerful surging current, and it is never easy crossing this final natural barrier. Most of the wildebeest succeed in crossing, but there are always some for whom the journey ends here. Those which succumb form rafts of food for vultures who squabble for a place to stand and gorge themselves. The majority overcome this test of will and stamina and at last approach the far shore and feel the welcome bottom beneath their hooves. They reform their herd and move at once straight toward a new peril, the predatory wild dogs who have been waiting for them. Having finally reached the terminus of their northward migration, the wildebeest soon will spread out to graze. But for now, they continue to move in ragged lines, gravely vulnerable to attack by these predators. The wild dogs study them carefully, watching for the weakest ready to isolate and bring down the one they'll select as the victim. Some of the wildebeest, though only too aware of the danger, falter, and occasionally some even stop. The herd inspection is over, and the wild dogs, ignoring a nervous Thompson's gazelle nearby, move into action. As individuals or pairs, the pack spreads out and will position themselves at intervals setting the stage for attack. As the hunt begins in earnest, some of the wildebeest begin to panic and break away from the herd. Tommies are ignored as the hunting dogs concentrate with single-minded determination on the wildebeest, moving in to isolate their quarry. There is the target a calf running with its mother. And as the hunting dogs charge into the herd, panic grows. Mm -hmm. 
of speed, the frightened calf breaks away from its mother and makes the fatal mistake of running past the positioned wild dogs. The last in the line of wild dogs takes up the chase and its fresh speed is more than a match for the nearly winded calf. A wild dog will bring it to a stop and hold it until the others catch up and together they will take it down. With immediate danger past, the Tommy moves on and not far away the zebras relax too, enjoying the opportunity to roll in the dust to dislodge ticks attached to their skin. Watching curiously and then moving on is the peculiar secretary bird, so named long ago because the feathers of head and neck resemble quill pens sticking from the hair of a secretary. These huge birds often stay close to the herd animals, such as zebras, in order to catch large insects, lizards, snakes, and rodents disturbed by the big animals. The secretary bird is also a predator, a bird of prey. Usually, they work in pairs. Striding about on their long, thin legs, they try constantly to flush small animals on the ground. When one or the other discovers prey, it quickly tramples it to death with its strong feet. And then snaps it up and swallows the hapless mouse or lizard. Though a powerful flyer, the secretary bird spends most of its time on the ground. Because they pose no threat, these large birds of prey are ignored by the grazing zebras and topi. But the herd animals always remain alert for the large predators of the morrow. The largest and most powerful predator of the Mara is one of the great cats, the magnificent lion. And its role in the balance of nature on the African plains is vital. The lion has great size and strength, and its powerful jaws with huge teeth are weapons few of the plains animals can defy. It has little difficulty bringing down any of the grazing animals found on the Mara. Yet it seldom hunts during the bright midday hours, preferring to sleep or just relax. Most often, the lion leaves the business of hunting prey to the female. When she's not busy caring for the newest members of the pride, the lioness is a superb hunter. She is also an excellent mother, accepting the mauling and cuddling of her little cubs with great patience and displaying a strong affection for them. Usually, there are four cubs to a litter, and though they're very demanding of her time, she nevertheless keeps an eye on other animals, like this topi and her newborn calf. Among the migratory grazers just arrived, and now having rested, some of the topi bulls are already engaging in fights to establish dominance in preparation for the breeding season. Fights are relatively brief and seldom result in injury. Most often, one of the adversaries concedes defeat. While these scuffles occur commonly, the topi are careful not to get so involved that they forget that certain predators are nearby. 
One big problem shared by all the antelope with calves is protecting their offspring. Black-backed jackals are both scavengers and accomplished predators and will sometimes try to keep a topi off balance and separate it from her calf. Working as a team, one harasses her while the other tries to get the calf. Not too fatigued from bearing the calf, she can usually fend them off. But it takes constant watchfulness and is very wearing on her. The newborn calf is unsteady, and though in a short time it will be able to outdistance the jackals, right now it is vulnerable. Sometimes the jackals are successful in bringing down the defenseless calf. But this time, the alert mother is able to hold the attackers at bay. The topi and her calf leave the jackals behind at last. And the young topi is already learning how to use its long legs to escape from predators. Among all the antelope species, alertness is the key to survival. This time, the topi calf was very lucky. With such an alert and dauntless mother for protection, it may survive to adulthood. One great hazard the plains grazers encounter is not individual predators, but those which work in pairs or packs to catch them unaware. This lioness, striding through the grass, is immediately apparent to the topi, who move out of her way and continue to watch her warily. The big cat's actions don't indicate immediate attack, but the antelopes stay alert, as do the zebras. Most of the grazing animals develop an uncanny ability to know when attack is imminent. But the animal they're watching may be a decoy, and another lioness may be the one which attacks. A small herd of wildebeest is the target this time. In anticipation, the male bestirs himself as the lioness attempts to approach unseen through the dense cover until she's close enough for a short, swift charge. But occasionally, things go awry. This time, the wildebeest are lucky. A vagrant breeze brings to them her scent, and instantly, though she has made no sound, they bolt. Her charge has begun too far from them. She's forced to accept failure this time, and the big male will have to wait a little longer for his meal. As survival of the fittest is a law of nature, it is also a fact that in nature there is no waste. Though a certain number of the herd animals are doomed to death by one or another of the predators, such death is never pointless or wasteful. From the great herds, it is the weak and sick which most often fall prey to the predators. The hyena, both an efficient predator and scavenger, often has to protect his food from such scavengers as these white-backed vultures clustered at his latest kill. Even a tawny eagle, itself a predator, seeks a share of the carcass. But even though the hyena's too full to eat any more of it now, he's averse to seeing them steal his prey. Incredibly graceful in flight, Another hungry individual comes in, the lappet-faced vulture. As another tawny eagle arrives, on the other side of the throng of scavengers, a great marabou stork 
gobbles whatever it can find. No morsel of the dead animal will be wasted. Competition is keen, and every scrap is vied for. And sometimes, one of the birds, like this tawny eagle, tries to steal a vulture's meal. The approach of a cheetah suddenly encourages the hyena to renewed efforts at preserving some of the meat for himself. Though the vultures respect the hyena's strength, they're not very much afraid. They simply bide their time, knowing that sooner or later he'll tire and move off again, and then the carcass will be all theirs. Recently awakened from his nap, the cheetah is hungry. A pair of jackals are trailing him. Attempts by the cheetah to ignore them make the jackals bolder. They're full of mischief. And their aim at the moment is nothing more nor less than sheer harassment of the big cat. They seem to sense he's ready to hunt and unwilling to expend his energy in driving them off. The disdain of the cheetah encourages the jackals to move in even closer. The cat seems determined to continue his search for prey and ignore their teasings. Even a nip on the tail by the jackal fails to really arouse the cheetah's ire any appreciable degree and the jackals finally begin losing zest for the game. The long-legged cat's unconcern has dampened their sport. Now, as the cat changes direction without even glancing at them, they give up their dangerous little game. At last, the cheetah sees what he was wisely saving his energy for a herd of wildebeest. The change in the cheetah's demeanor is immediate. The hunt is on. And even though the wildebeest are nervously aware of the approach of their deadly foe, the cat must move in as close as possible before they bolt. nervousness turns to fear, but they've let the cheetah get too close. Moving into a lope after them, the cheetah seeks a target. The young wildebeest had little chance against the awesome speed of the world's fastest mammal. It strives to remain erect against the inexorable pressure the cat's now exerting to down it. If the wildebeest can keep on its feet and eventually break the hold of the cat, it may be able to escape because by then the cheetah's reserve of energy for high-speed pursuit will be expended. The drama of predator and prey is unceasing on these plains and a part of everyday survival. Living with danger, the great herds continue to move about as they always have. More will be born and more will die. 
as nature provides the proper balance on these vast plains for both the great herds of grazing animals and the predators of the morrow. There is an adage which says, no wild animal ever dies of old age in nature. And that's largely true. Predation and the death of prey animals involved is a vital part of nature's plan. Those animals that have become weak and unfit more easily fall prey to the predators. Thus, not only providing food for the predators, but equally assuring that only the strongest and fittest survive to reproduce their kind. Without this system of balance where the weak are eliminated, undesirable genetic traits could possibly cause an entire species to become weakened and ultimately disappear. Predators are just as important to the natural scene as non-predatory animals and should never be wantonly destroyed. Both types of animals need one another to survive and to maintain the complex natural balance in the wild kingdom.